Hi, and welcome back to day two of the Scout video sew along. Let's recap day one quickly before we get started. In our last video, we talked about the Scout, gave you tips for choosing your fabric, and also went through the list of supplies and tools you'll need to complete your own Scout. Today I'll be talking about how to choose your size, as well as going over some basic common pattern adjustments for the Scout tee. Unfortunately, there's no way that I can possibly get every adjustment into these videos, so I'm sorry if there's a specific adjustment that you want to see that I haven't included. One of the most important things you can do to start any new garment off on the right foot is taking accurate measurements and properly choosing a size. If the pattern you start with is too small or too large, no matter what you do adjustment-wise, your garment is always going to be a bit off. The three basic body measurements needed to select your size are bust, waist, and hip. Since the Scout has an A-line shape, the most important measurement is going to be the bust followed by the hip. Generally, I like to have someone else take my measurements so I'm not twisting and bending while I take them, but it's not a big deal if you can't find another sewer to do so. The bust measurement refers to the full bust. For this measurement, you're going to want to measure around the fullest part of your bust, wearing whatever type of bra or undergarment you plan on wearing underneath your finished garment. Make sure the tape measure is parallel to the floor and taut, but not tight. Make sure you're still able to breathe. Take that measurement and write it down. The waist measurement will be at your natural waist. On many people, this is the smallest point of your torso, but that can depend on your body shape. I'm personally a square, so there isn't an obvious waistline on me. Um, it just kind of goes bust to hips. So if you fall into my category, a good rule of thumb is it's just kind of where you bend from, if that makes sense. So again, you're gonna wanna put the tape measure around, parallel to the floor, taut but not tight, take that measurement, and write it down. Now the hip measurement will be the fullest part of your hips and butt. Typically this is approximately seven inches below your natural waist, though it can be higher or lower depending on your body. You'll wanna make sure you get around the full circumference no matter where it falls, so you don't end up with a garment that's tight in the hips. I like to stand with my hips um, shoulder width apart. I think it just gives me a more accurate measurement for when I'm actually wearing something. You're gonna take your hip measurement, again, parallel to the floor, you won't have a mic in your back pocket. Um, <laughs> so take that measurement and write that down as well. I record all of my measurements and notes for each project on one of our free downloadable pattern cards. That way I have all the information I used for each project hanging neatly with the pattern for the next time I wanna make it. I'll link to the pattern cards in the description below the video. Once you get your measurements, it's time to select your size on the size chart. You'll find all the information inside of your pattern instructions. If you fall into different sizes for each measurement, as I do, you can either go with a straight size of the largest measurement or blend between sizes to get a better fit. There are a few things to think about in this situation. As I mentioned previously, the waist is the least important measurement so if that's the largest garment size you fall into, I recommend checking the finished measurements for that size. If your waist is inside that measurement, then go with the larger size of your bust or hip. If you're more than a size apart in the more important measurements of bust and hip, you'll likely want to blend to avoid having one section of the shirt tight or loose. That situation is usually never great for the comfort or look of the garment. The measurements shown here are my personal measurements, so what I would do is blend from an 8 at the bust to a 10 at the hips and just omit my waist measurement entirely. If you're a straight size and don't need to do any pattern adjustments, you are good to cut your pattern pieces, but if you fall in between sizes, as I do, or just need to make an adjustment, this next section is for you. Making adjustments to your pattern is a really great way to customize your fit, and it doesn't need to be difficult or overwhelming. I've included this in previous videos, but I think it's super important. So before we get started, here are five tips that I have found helpful for students over the past 10 years of teaching. Start with a muslin. 
I always recommend making a muslin or test garment before making any pattern alterations. This way you aren't guessing at what you'll need to adjust, but can pinpoint exactly what is working and what you might need to adjust. Only make one pattern adjustment at a time. We get questions all the time that go something like this. I can't get the fit down on a pattern. I've done XYZ adjustments. Which one is causing this new problem? <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't diagnose that either, and there's no way to isolate the issue because all three adjustments were done at once. So if you're looking to do multiple pattern adjustments, do one, test it, make sure that worked, and then proceed to the next one. Once you get your initial adjustment looking good and you're ready to move on to the next one, if you're doing more than one, trace off a new pattern piece and make the adjustment to the new piece. That way, if it turns out you didn't need the adjustment after all, or it isn't working for any reason, you're able to easily step back to the pattern before, rather than you cut up this pattern, you have no idea what you did previously, this adjustment didn't work, and you're gonna have to start over. So I highly recommend just tracing off a new one, make the adjustment to that, and then it's very easy to step back. A general order of adjustments that I recommend is starting with blending between sizes, then do any length adjustments. Bust adjustments come next, and then proceed with anything else you feel you might need. Don't forget that you can always measure any point on your body and compare that to the pattern. Not sure if the shoulders are going to be too wide or narrow, measure your shoulder and then measure the pattern. In the same way that we use body measurements to draft the pattern, you can use your own measurements to check the fit before you even start. Now let's get to those specific pattern adjustments. The first pattern adjustment we're going to cover is blending between sizes. In this example, we'll be blending from a 10 bust to a 12 hip. You'll want to blend between the bust and the hip rather than from the underarm to the hem because if you do that, you're cutting off some of the bust measurement that you wanted and also some of the hip measurement that you wanted. So I like to just go a few inches up and then the bust, you just measure perpendicularly over to the side. And then just draw a line. And then you can go back in with your curved ruler if you feel like it's a little bit of an angle where it joins. And just kind of blend that together there. And then again, soften the angle here. Again, here you can see we went from the bust down over to the hip. We maintained our full hip measurement and our full bust measurement. You'll want to make the same blending adjustment to any pattern pieces that cross the point where you blended or that align to the blended pieces. This means if you blend across the waist, you'll also need to make this adjustment to the back. For pieces that only attach to the garment above or below the blending point, you'll need to use the size they're attaching to. So here in this case, since we have a 10 above the bust, you would use a size 10 sleeve as well as the size 10 neckband. Next up, we'll discuss lengthening and shortening your pattern pieces. This alteration is pretty straightforward. There are two main places to lengthen or shorten your pattern, at the waist or at the hem. To lengthen through the bodice, start by locating the pattern pieces you need to adjust. We'll be working with the front here. Cut between the lengthen and shorten lines marked on the pattern. Take a piece of paper and place it underneath the pattern where you cut. I like to weight the pattern down. And I haven't cut my pattern piece out yet, so you're going to extend the center front down. And then we're going to lengthen it an inch. So we're going to align an inch 
with this top line. Draw a line across. Then I can see through my paper. So I'm going to align the center front with the line I drew and make sure that the other match point line aligns with the line I drew as well. Weight that down. And then you would tape the paper to the pattern and cut out your pattern piece. Now, if you were going to shorten, I'll show you how to do that. It's basically the opposite of what we just did. Remove your paper. So you'll have cut through. And then you just shorten by drawing the line with the amount you want to shorten above the length and shorten line. Again, align your center front edge. And the top of the line with the line you drew. I'm going to weight that down. And then you'll notice we get a little jag here. So you'll need to re-blend the side. Grab a different color for that. So then you'll just cut along this new red line that you blended. And that will be your shortened pattern. Now, if you want to adjust the length just at the hem, it's really easy. All you have to do, say we want to take an inch off. We just draw in a new hem edge following the original line. So this is just an inch above. So you would cut, sorry, we're doing the 12s. You would cut there. If you want to lengthen it, same thing. We we'll just draw it in, extend the side seam, block in an inch. and extend your center front. And now we have a new longer hem. Now again, if you lengthen or shorten your front, you're going to also want to do that to the back. So keep that in mind. Now that we've discussed lengthening or shortening the body of the scout, I'm going to walk you through how I would lengthen or shorten each of the sleeves. So here we have um, two sleeves from the scout variation pack. We have the long sleeve and the cuffed sleeve. For the long sleeve, you can lengthen from the bottom, but keep in mind, this is going to get narrower as it goes down and it could start getting tight on your hand. I definitely recommend lengthening the long sleeve from the lengthen or shorten line. If you wanna just shorten it, you can easily do that from here. If you wanna take off a few inches, say it's a bracelet sleeve, you want it to hit three quarters, you would again just say, you wanna cut off six inches. Trace along there. I said six, but I'm doing seven. <laughs> and the reason you would cut this up rather than shorten seven inches here, if you do that, the wrist is not going to fit around your upper arms as comfortably. So again, you can lengthen or shorten a little bit through here. I would definitely lengthen through here, but if you're going to take a lot off, Shorten it from the bottom. Now for the cuffed sleeve, you're gonna to wanna to do both through this line because you'll see here we have all these fold lines and notches. We don't wanna mess those up because we're going to then screw up our cuff and we're gonna to have to remark these in and nobody wants to deal with that. So just right through this line, just like we did for the other ones. Now for the short sleeve, I would simply take that off the bottom because you're probably not going to shorten it that much you're probably not going to lengthen it that much because it would be a little easier to just cut the long sleeve back. So just add on or subtract from the bottom. Now the cap sleeve is drafted so it cuts in a little bit more than the short sleeve. So keep that in mind. For this one, I would definitely add or subtract from the bottom. And you may want to just leave a little extra seam allowance at the side in case you need to adjust that angle slightly, depending on the width of your bicep. Now the pedal sleeve is probably the most difficult to adjust um, because it's cut in half and it does angle up towards the center. 
You can see it overlaps like this. We have the center notch here and the two pieces align. And then where a typical sleeve would come across the bottom, obviously the pedal sleeve cuts up into a pedal shape. So to adjust that, you're going to want to draw a line. I just kind of go through the center of the side seam here. Let me zoom in a tiny bit. And just draw a line out to the hem edge. Now, you don't want to go up into here. This is the sleeve cap. You don't want to mess with the sleeve cap. So it needs to go from the side seam to the hem edge. So what you would then do is cut along that line. You're not going to want to lengthen this one too much or it's going to kind of get weird and floppy. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to just tape this to my paper so it doesn't move around. Extend the grain line so you keep things in line. And then say we're going to just lengthen it a half inch. That's a good amount. Draw in your line. You guys will be using like a nicer pencil that doesn't stand out quite so much, doesn't make such a thick line, so you'll be a little more accurate. <clears throat> Pardon me. Take that down. And you can see here we now have a large jag where this would come down and hit about here, and this one comes up to about there. So I like to take my curved ruler and I just kind of move it around until I find a good center point between the two. And it may take more than one line to really get it blended in there nicely. So then at the side seam here, you're just gonna blend from the one corner to the other. So we're adding a little bit to the top, cutting off a little bit on the bottom. So you'd repeat that for the other sleeve, and that's how you lengthen the petal sleeve. If you want to shorten it, it's the same thing, just in reverse. Now let's talk bust adjustments. If you've ever researched bust adjustments, you know there are a few different ways to achieve them. I'm going to show you the method that we use in the studio. The Scout comes in both our 0 to 18 B cup range and our 14 to 30 D cup range. Keep in mind, these are sewing cup sizes, not bra cup sizes. Sewing cup size is determined by subtracting your upper bust measurement from your lower bust measurement, while bra size also takes the under bust into account. This means your sewing cup and bra cup sizes can differ. The first thing you'll need to do before you start any bust adjustment is to figure out what sort of an adjustment you'll need, if any. To do this, we're going to need our full bust measurement, which we took earlier in this video, as well as our upper bust measurement. To take your upper bust measurement, place the tape measure around your body, just under the armpits. It will lay over your bust and go around your shoulder blades. The tape measure may angle upward slightly at the bust, that's fine. Subtract your upper bust from your full bust. If the number you get differs from the measurement associated with each cup size, you may need to make an adjustment. Over the number and you'll need a full bust adjustment and under a small. You can see here in this chart what measurements correspond to which sewing cup size. In the case of the B cup, which is the pattern I'm using, there will be a two inch difference between the upper and full bust. This is what the 0 to 18 pattern is drafted for. If your measurement is under 2 inches, you'll need a small bust adjustment. If it's over, you'll be doing a full bust adjustment. The same is true for the 14 to 30 D cup pattern. If your measurement is over 4 inches, which is the standard D cup number, you'll need a full bust adjustment. If it's under, you'll need a small. For example, with a full bust of 40 inches and an upper bust of 36 inches, you'd subtract 36 from 40 to get 4 inches, 
which on the 0 to 18 pattern would require a full bust adjustment. If you were on the 14 to 30 pattern, you would be just fine with the 4 inches. You could cut without a bust adjustment. Now that we've established what sort of adjustment we're going to make, we need to calculate the amount you're going to add or subtract from your pattern. Take your number, in our case 4 inches, and subtract 2 inches from it to get the full amount of your bust adjustment. Subtracting the 2 inches comes from the fact that the pattern is drafted for a B cup, which is already a 2 inch difference. Since this amount is drafted into the pattern, you're just adding the additional amount on top of what already exists. You would then divide the full amount of the bust adjustment, 2 inches, in half, so you would be doing a 1 inch adjustment on each side of the pattern. If you had a number that was less than 2 for the 0 to 18, or less than 4 for the 14 to 30, you're still going to divide it in half. Say we had a 1 inch difference for the 0 to 18. We'll divide that by 2 to get a half. That's the amount you subtract from each side while doing your small bust adjustment. I'll now walk you through a full bust adjustment on the 0 to 18 pattern using our example math. Starting at the apex of the dart, draw a line down to the hemline of the pattern, making sure to keep the line parallel to the grain line. You can use the length and shorten lines to square that up since they're perpendicular to the grain line. You're going to mark that line 1. From there, you're going to draw a line from the apex to the arm side. I like this to hit approximately a third of the way up the armhole from the underarm seam. That's something that I've found works for me, but if there's a point that works for you, just stick with that. You're going to label this line 2. Next, we're going to connect the apex to the side seam. On the 0 to 18 pattern, you draw a line from the side seam to the point perpendicular to the grain line, like that. That will be labeled number 3. So here's how this will look for the 14 to 30. This is a size 20, so we're going to draw a line from the apex down to the hem, parallel to the grain line. We'll draw a line from the apex up to the arm side. And then there is a dart here already. So instead of drawing the line perpendicular to the grain line out to the side seam, we're going to find the center of that line, which is right here. Sorry, the center of the dart. You're going to draw a line connecting the center to the apex. And again, this will be line one, line two, and line three. Finally, you'll need to draw a line through the body of the garment. We're using the length and shorten line because it's already here and it runs through the pattern without affecting the alignment of anything else. Label this line four. Now we're going to slash through the hemline along line one up to the bust and then up over to the arm side along line two. We're going to make sure to cut two, but not through the pattern at the underarm point. We want to make sure that the two pieces are hinged. So here we go. Pivot. And stopping, you can see the two pieces are still hinged. Now we're going to cut along line three from the side seam to the apex. Again, two, but not through the point. We also want these two pieces hinged together. And here you can see they're still hinged. Now I'm going to tape just this corner down so this corner isn't really going to go anywhere. I'm also going to weight it. Now what we're going to do, our adjustment is one inch. 
So we're just going to mark a line. Sorry, trying to get my hand not in your way. We're going to mark a line one inch away from the center. So again, here we have the center panel, our cut line, and then one inch away. This is the measurement that we calculated previously. Make sure that the two edges of the opening are parallel. This movement will open the slit at the slide. You can see we're creating a dart here. So you want to align this cut edge along the line you just drew and then weight it down. You'll notice when you move this panel out, it became longer than the center panel. To remedy this, we're going to cut along line four. Temporarily move that. We're going to square a line out. Just continue line four. And then I also like to just extend the center front so I make sure I'm aligning that properly. Then this piece just tucks right into the corner. You can see they're now the same length. So you can just tape that down. As I mentioned before, in forming this adjustment, we created a dart that we'll now need to address. What I'm going to do is trace off this pattern and then we'll work on the new pattern to address the dart. So we're just going to trace and I did tape this down so you can just peel that off gently. Trace. Again, gently peel. If you have tape that you want to get off again later, you can stick it on your clothes to kind of reduce the tackiness and it'll be easier to remove from paper. Here's our new piece. We're going to trace across here, get the side seam. And then we're gonna to wanna to trace into our new dart. And the arm side. And make sure you copy over this notch and this bust point. So now you can remove your pattern and you'll see what we're working with. All right, so here you can see our dart. I'm going to switch to a red pencil so you can see the difference between the two things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find the center of the dart. And I'm gonna draw a line from the bus point through the center. Now what I wanna do is I wanna back the dart point off of the apex slightly so the end of the dart doesn't land right on the fullest point of your bust. So I'm just gonna do about five eighths of an inch. You wanna do a little bit more the bigger the bust is. Um, some of that's gonna just be trial and error on your own body, it depends how your bust is shaped. Um, so you're gonna connect this new point to these dart legs at the side seam. Now we need to fold this dart. And we wanna fold the dart legs together with the dart take up pointing towards the bottom of the garment. And again, the dart take up is the amount of fabric that's taken up into the dart. So to do this, I like to score the bottom leg and the center just lightly with my awl. And this is easiest done if you have like a corner, you can do this over the corner of your table. I'm gonna to try to use the point of my tailor's press. And see, so just fold right along that score point. Put the point at the edge and then just fold it right up. And you can see how easy that is 
on a corner. It's gonna be a lot harder on the flat table. This is a trick my first pattern making teacher, Mrs. Bean taught me. So thank you, Audrian, for that. Um, <laughs> I then like to just tape this uh, because we're going to need to transfer the side seam onto the dart take up below. You can see how awkward the pattern is with the dart folded because it's just paper making a 3D shape. So there are two ways to mark this. The first is with a needle point tracer, and this is similar to a tracing wheel that you would use to transfer um, pattern markings, but it's super sharp. It can puncture your skin, that's how sharp it is. So it's great for making marks that go through multiple layers of paper. So you can just run that right over the side seam there. And when you unfold your dart, there will be little holes right there. See if I can zoom in enough so you can see them. Hopefully you can see these tiny holes. The second way to fold the dart, and you, you can see how awkward it is to fold when it's not on a corner. So I'm just gonna pop that back up there again. You can just cut along this and it'll just shave that right off in the perfect form. Get rid of that piece. And now when we undo the tape, you've got that nice angled take up that will blend seamlessly with the side seam. There's one more thing you need to do, and that is to blend this line here at the bottom where we had the inch from creating the dart. We just need to blend across there. Then a few other things just to make note of. Make sure you transfer your notch for your armhole into the pattern so you don't cut it off and then it's gone. I also like to make a little small drill hole where my dart is. So I take a little mat, place it under my pattern. I have a screw punch here. It has a small tip that cuts a small hole in the pattern. And it's just easier to mark your darts this way. So I just pop that on there push down and it's hard to see because I just cut onto the same color but it cuts a small hole. From there we cut out the rest of our pattern if you did a large adjustment you may need to blend the armhole point I would just fill it in slightly if needed that's not a big deal I feel like this paper is so loud. This is just standard butcher paper I got from a paper wholesaler here in Chicago. They were in the West Loop, um, but that neighborhood's fancy now, so I'm sure they've moved if they even exist anymore. Cut the neckline. And then finally, I use my notcher to notch my notches. So that way they're ready for when I trace. And I have this pattern notcher that cuts a small hole. And if you're wondering about these tools, all of the tools shown here are available on our website as part of our Pattern Essentials Toolkit. It also comes with a set of pattern hooks so you can hang your patterns. Um, and they're just really great. I love them. I use them all the time for when I'm making adjustments, tracing patterns, which are just really handy to use. All right, so that is our full bust adjustment. I'm going to show you a small one really quick, and that'll be it for today. Now, the small bust adjustment is essentially just the full bust adjustment, but in reverse. Instead of creating more room for the bust, we're removing it. I'll be using our one inch A cup calculation from the measurement portion of this video. Starting at the apex, we're going to draw the same vertical line down to the hem. This will be labeled line one. 
From there, draw a line connecting the apex to the arm side. This will be line two. We're going to need to draw a line from the apex out to the side seam. Again, this is line three. And for line four, we'll be using the length and shorten line again. Now again, you're going to slash from the hem up to the bust point and then over to the arm side to but not through that point. You want them hinged. And then from line three, you're going to cut from the side seam over to the apex. Again, keep those hinged. Now as we're removing room, rather than drawing the line further out, we're going to draw the line closer to the center front. So we're doing a half inch. So I'm just making a half inch line. That's a half inch. We'll take the other cut edge and align that. And you can see rather than creating a dart, we're actually overlapping the side here. So we can tape that in place. And again, I'm just gonna tape right across there. Now you'll notice rather than the side panel getting longer, the side panel gets shorter since we overlapped, it brought everything up. So we need to adjust the center front. Again, extend line four over. And then you're just gonna nestle this piece right in there. For the side seam, you can see we've created a bit of a hole right here. So you could blend from the top to the bottom. I like to take my curved ruler because why use a straight ruler when you could use a curved ruler? And I just like to soften that a little bit. I feel like this gives a nice shape to the bust area um, and it's really up to personal preference. So I just blend right along there. That is your small bust adjustment. Now there's one more thing you're gonna to need to do to complete your bust adjustment, and that is adjust the length of the back. So if you did a full bust adjustment, you're going to lengthen the pattern piece to match the lines of the front. If you did a small bust adjustment, you're going to shorten it. You want the side seams to match, otherwise your pattern won't sew together properly. So don't forget to do that last step. So that's it for today's lesson. I hope this information helps you to make a more informed decision on choosing a size and clarify some of the most common pattern adjustments. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help out. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our latest posts. And I'll see you back here next time, hopefully with your fabric pre-washed and ready to cut. See you then, bye.